My name is Eunice. I am a physician at Cincinnati Children's Hospital. I am mother of Rowan. He is my little angel who was born about two months ago. At our 20-week ultrasound, we found out that Rowan had tricuspid atresia. Even though I'm a physician, I'm still a mom first. I'm still learning the red flags of what to expect for him when he's in trouble. He had his first surgery at about two weeks of life. We had an opportunity to learn more about how to take care of him at home. So that became part of the process of the home surveillance program. I will say it is a duty, but it can be done. Now that I've been doing it for the past two months, it's gotten a lot easier and I've become more familiar with what's right for Rowan. In this short video, we will provide you with an overview of how to care for your baby at home during the interstage period. We will begin first by demonstrating the two daily tasks of the home surveillance process. The first task is how to perform daily weight checks. Then we will review how to perform your baby's pulse oximeter checks. Finally, we will review red flags or symptoms that would indicate that your baby may need medical attention. If your baby would experience a red flag, you should contact your nurse or cardiologist immediately. We will be closely monitoring your baby's weight and oxygen saturations while at home. You should have received both a scale and a pulse oximeter before discharge. In order to obtain an accurate weight, please follow these steps. Step one, place the scale on a flat, sturdy surface. Turn your scale on and make sure it is set for kilograms, not pounds. Step two, undress your baby, including the diaper. The weight must be a naked weight. This will ensure that you are measuring the most accurate weight to properly monitor your baby's weight gain progress. If your baby happens to feed using an NG tube, be sure to hold any tubing off the scale. It is best to weigh your baby before a feed. Step three, you will want the scale to be at a zero balance immediately before placing your baby on the scale. You may do this by pushing the zero or tear button. Step four, gently place your baby directly on the scale. Never leave your baby unattended. The weight indication light will initially fluctuate between numbers before stopping on one number. Step five, once the weight has registered, remove your baby from the scale and document their weight. The pulse oximeter is used to measure your baby's oxygen level. We would like you to check your baby's oxygen level at least once a day or more if needed. To check your baby's oxygen level, follow these steps. Step one, turn your pulse oximeter on and wrap the unconnected oxygen probe around your baby's hand or foot. It is important for the hand or foot to come in contact with the sensor on the oxygen probe. As your child gets older, you may need to switch to a finger or a toe. Step two, connect the pulse oximeter probe to the pulse oximeter. Try to keep your baby as still and calm as possible while you wait for a reading. Your baby's movement may interfere with an accurate reading. Make sure that their hand or foot is warm and bundled. Be patient. The red light on the oxygen probe will indicate that the sensor is working. The sensor may take anywhere from a few seconds to a few minutes to determine an accurate reading. Some pulse oximeters will have a green flashing light which indicates the sensor is working. If the light is flashing red and the heart rate is low, it may indicate the device is not getting an accurate reading. Step three, once an accurate number has been registered on the pulse oximeter, remove the probe from your baby and carefully wrap the probe's adhesive pad, place your baby in a safe environment and turn off the pulse oximeter and document their heart rate and oxygen saturation. Here are a few helpful hints. To get a consistent and accurate pulse oximetry reading, measure the oxygen level close to the same time each day, preferably in the morning. If your probe is an older probe and the adhesive is no longer intact, you may not get an accurate reading. If this is the case, you may want to start with a fresh probe. Most probes last no more than one week. Red flags are signs or symptoms that indicate a change in your baby's baseline condition that may require medical attention. The term baseline refers to the way your baby normally looks and acts. 
A fever may indicate that a possible infection or virus may be starting. Please notify your interstage team if your baby develops a temperature of 100.4 degrees Fahrenheit or greater. Watch if your baby starts to change their feeding pattern. This might include a sudden change in their baseline feeding pattern or not tolerating feeds as they have in the past. Your baby may take in less volume than their baseline. Your baby may become short of breath while feeding or may take frequent breaks to achieve their goal volume. Your baby may become sweaty during their feed. We expect that your baby will gain weight every day. Watch for these weight gain patterns. If your baby does not gain weight for two to three days in a row, weight loss of 20 grams in three days or 30 grams in one day. If your baby experiences any of these weight patterns, please call your interstage team. Please document the weight each day and compare it to the previous day's weight. Sometimes vomiting can be a sign that something is wrong with your baby's heart. It can also indicate the start of a virus or a change in their feeding pattern. It is important to inform your interstage team if your baby is vomiting more frequently or is having diarrhea. Two or more episodes of vomiting or diarrhea or more than usual in a 24-hour period. We suggest that you check the oxygen level every morning. We expect that your baby's oxygen level would not go below 70% or 10% below their baseline oxygen level. Every baby has fussy times, but if your baby becomes extremely fussy, is inconsolable, or continues to be fussy for several hours, please notify your interstage team. Your baby may be telling us in their way that something is not right. Watch for redness, swelling, or drainage at the surgical wound site. We would like for you to watch for a change in your baby's breathing pattern or a change in their color. We suggest that each day when your child is relaxed and restful, you watch their breathing with their shirt off. This is a way to become familiar with how your baby normally looks when they are breathing. This is also known as their baseline breathing pattern. The following signs may indicate that your baby could be having labored breathing or respiratory distress. Difficulty breathing, breathing harder or faster, nasal flaring or head bobbing, intercostal or substernal retractions. Watch for pulling in of the skin under the rib cage or between the ribs. Also watch for a pulling in of the breastbone while breathing grunting sounds while breathing, cyanosis, which is seen as a bluish color of the skin or mouth, rapid or shallow breathing. Any of the above movements may indicate that something may not be right with your baby's breathing. Please call the interstage team if you believe that your child is having a change in their baseline breathing pattern. If you believe that your child is having a crisis or may be unstable, please call 911. During a potential crisis circumstance, do not try to drive to the hospital on your own. We hope this video provides you with valuable instructions on how to care for your infant during the interstage period. The doctors and nurses at Cincinnati Children's are always available to answer your questions both day and night. As a parent, you know your child the best. Do not hesitate to call the hospital if you have questions or concerns.